F1 has decided to cap the driver's salary from 2021. Let's get started. Back in January, Lewis Hamilton took to social media to rubbish claims he was demanding $90 million per year from Mercedes to resign with their team for the 2020 Formula 1 season. The pattern was repeated early this month when Hamilton responded to further reports, now insisting $50 million was the magic figure by insisting the conversation hasn't even begun over his salary. Nonetheless, our sources are adamant negotiations started at around this level before the Mercedes main board imposed an absolute maximum of half that, but even at the lower level, a stipend of over $1 million per race might be thought an eye-watering amount in return for twiddling a wheel for under two hours on alternate Sundays. Why is any team prepared to shell out such sums for a driver? The answer is simple. A driver is a performance differentiator, able to find a split second here through bravery, a nanosecond there through sheer skill, and a microsecond everywhere through an application. Teams willingly pay more for top drivers because they deliver lap times and victories. So do top aerodynamicists and chassis engineers, yet from 2021, their salaries fall within the budget cap. So much so that teams have commenced retrenchment proceedings while others have planned to redeploy the staff in other motorsport categories or even activities outside of racing. Ferrari has endured a difficult 2020 season so far that has seen it score only two podium finishes and slumped to sixth place in the Constructors' Championship. The team looked to remedy the aerodynamic flaws of the Ferrari SF1000 with a three-stage update package, the final part of which was added to the car for last weekend's Portuguese Grand Prix at Portimao. Charles Leclerc put in an impressive display to qualify and finish the race fourth, comfortably finishing as the leading midfield driver. It marked a drastic turnaround from Ferrari's disappointing display at Mugello last month, where it celebrated its 1000th Grand Prix with an underwhelming run to 8th and 10th in a race with just 12 finishers. Team principal Binotto denied there was a day and night difference in the car's performance compared to Mugello, and while encouraged by the step forward, he wanted to see how it performed on other circuits before making a firm judgement. Daniel Kvyat isn't at all concerned about the possibility of dropping out of Formula 1 again at the end of the 2020 season. Previously dropped from the Red Bull program, Kvyat was brought back into the fold at the same time as Alex Alpon to drive for Toro Rosso at the start of the 2019 season, and now a year and a half later, both are in danger of being booted out again. Kvyat has had a difficult season with the team now known as Alpha Tauri and finds himself P14 in the Drivers' Championship with 14 points to his name. His teammate Pierre Gasly, meanwhile, has scored 63 points to give himself an outside chance in the fierce battle for P4 in the Drivers' Championship this season. Perhaps if there were no obvious contenders for Kvyat's seat, it would be less of a concern, but F2 star Yuki Tsunoda by Alpha Tauri's own admittance will be in the lineup sooner or later. And with Gasly confirmed for 2021, that doesn't sound too good for Kvyat. However, Kvyat really isn't concerned about the situation. After all, he has been through this all before. Instead, he is just going to do the best job he can for the rest of the season, and if that isn't enough to earn him a Formula 1 seat for 2021, then so be it. Anyways, now it's time for Meme of the Day, and here it is. And that's been it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Apart from that, I hope you're an awesome day and um, bye bye.